Hello and welcome. Today, Index Ventures announced a new fund, a 150 million euro fund, which has the participation of two major pharmaceutical companies, Johnson & Johnson and GSK. So today, I talk to Francesco de Robertus, who is partner at Index Ventures, as well as Monsef Salawi, who is chairman of research and development at GlaxoSmithKline, and Paul Stoffels, who is worldwide chairman of Johnson & Johnson Pharmaceuticals. So, Francesco, could you tell us more about the, the actual venture fund you've just raised? Yeah, and so the novelty is really the fact that uh, for the first time in an index ventures fund, we have two uh, pharmaceutical uh, large companies as uh, investors. And that is really very exciting for us because it's, uh, it's an important commitment, uh, both in terms of cash, but in terms also, most importantly, in terms of people, because we will have uh, Monsef, Monsef Slawi and, uh, and Paul on the scientific advisory board of the fund. And of course, it's the, what really excites me most because it's, it's the place where we will create the interface between these senior, uh, very experienced and, and important leaders of the R&D industry uh, to the young scientific entrepreneurs that are starting up their own companies. It would be super exciting for them. I'm absolutely convinced it would be super exciting for them to interface every few months in, uh, in, in small sessions, in short sessions with these people. So that is really what is very exciting and novel in our approach. Right. And of course, to take on two, two major pharmaceutical companies, to get them to come together uh, to agree on this is quite significant. Uh, Monsef, you're uh, obviously uh, a visionary in terms of how R&D should be done. You've made a lot of changes at GSK. Uh, in this particular case, why was this important for you? So this is one of the many approaches we are using to access diversity of ideas and entrepreneurs to make medicines. And really what was attractive and very special here is the uh, asset-centric strategy that's pursued, where in fact it's a mean to focus the minds and the energy on advancing a medicine rather than building infrastructure. So it's very lean and very effective. And secondly, frankly, is the track record and the network of academic centers and entrepreneurs that Index has, including the drug hunters that are going to be key entrepreneurs uh, helping those companies that um, that will be invested into. And finally, the vision that uh, Francesco shared with us and the idea of partnering also with J&J uh, &J in, in such an innovative trailblazing uh, approach is, uh, is frankly also very exciting. We really look forward to it. Of course, uh, Johnson Johnson has got a, a, a long history uh, in, in having its own venture capital f um, fund through J&J &J, uh, DC. And uh, why, again, for you, uh, uh, Paul, is this, is this important? Why do you need to actually work with another major pharmaceutical company uh, to get involved in a fund like this? Well, it's, um, it's to get several different approaches end-to-end. -end. We are doing our own venture capital approach into companies. This is another uh, window on the world for us. Collaborating with a strong venture capital partner in Europe gives us access to a the view on what's happening here. But it combines that with uh, the asset-centric approach where um, um, we, can, we can help a lot. First of all, um, I think we have a lot of experience in failures. Yeah? We know where not to go. Yeah? And, uh, and also a lot of winners, what to select. Also on what we have as capabilities, on demand of the companies, we are prepared to share some of our capabilities. And then the learning on doing the killing experiments first, on what is the minimal investment you do to get to the best answers to learn that you have an asset which can go forward, is something which brings all the experience, bringing us together, brings all the experience of venturing and pharmaceutical together to get a better and, um, and faster uh, um, pass through of new molecules through, the, through, through development. And that overall approach, it, we think and I think, should give a better return on investment, yeah, but also result in more successful companies. And we hope that we can help to get more successful ventures established. Okay, so Francesco, um, we're all in the game of risk. Um, venture capitalists are in the game of risk. Pharmaceutical companies are in the game of risk. Risk has changed. And is because of that change, is that the reason why now venture firms have to bring on pharmaceutical companies in order to raise the funds? You've raised a 150 million euro fund. Was that really a prerequisite for you to join to get to raise that level of money? Uh, not at all. Actually, I mean, it's really very important to specify that the reason why we have uh, Paul and Monsef around the table is not because we were almost going out of business and we needed some angels to rescue us. 
the thing we're, things were going well. The asset-centric model is validated. We are having a track record that makes it validated. And we decided to bring it to the next level in the discussions that naturally started to originate as we knew each other from, from business uh, dealings. And we had this idea, why don't we bring this to the next level? And of course, this is the exciting part, which is, 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 is a partnership out of strength, not a partnership out of necessity, because that would not really lead anywhere. So this is very important, actually. It's an important question. Uh, I had to do convincing on my partners to, to really accept for the first time to have a life sciences focused only fund, because of course it was not in Paul's or Monsef's interest to have a part of their cash invested in a mixed end fund, which invests half of it or even more than half of it in social media, right? Mm -hmm. Which is great, but is not of the purpose. So once we came up with this idea, I really had to find the good arguments with my partnership that clearly understood it very clearly, very quickly, and was very excited. Uh, uh, you know, of the caliber of interest, more than the cash, the caliber of interest. When I could tell them that Paul and Monsef were going to be on the SAB together with their two senior colleagues, it was saying, okay, so here is something serious. Let's give a real chance on this. Even though these changes, this means that we have to change slightly the structural organization of our funds mm. that we have had for the last 15 years. Right. I suppose we want to uh, emphasize the, the independence that, that both J and J and GSK have, they don't have any pre-agreed options on 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 any of any potential acquisition or any licenses to to any of these investee companies. Um, so, from a from you, Monsef, from your point of view, I mean, how important is this from a strategic point of view? Obviously, it, it appears that there is no direct strategic influence on the fund. But how important is this from just from a general strategic point of view for GSK to get involved in, cre in, in supporting funds like this? Actually, very important. I'll tell you my perception or our perception of how this fund looks to any entrepreneur. This fund looks to an entrepreneur as an opportunity to access capital with the knowledge, the know-how, the, know the insight, the experience of two large pharma companies. We're talking about maybe 30,000 scientists and thousands of years of experience of making a drug from discovery all the way to an approved medicine without actually partnering from the starting point with a large pharma company. In other words, while you keep your freedom to play the market dynamics, and if you're successful, you will be successful, and then the market will define exactly what your reward is. I think it's an incredible opportunity, and we were very excited about it because we expect, and we will work hard to make that happen, that a lot of great entrepreneurs and scientists with great ideas are going to be attracted to this fund, and therefore we will get exposed to them. We will help them drive their ideas, and then we will compete if those ideas are really of interest to access them. We'll compete between ourselves, we'll compete with all our other uh, competitors and in the industry, and that's to the best interest of the fund, to the best interest of the company, and either because we enter into a deal to our best interest or because we are an LP to our best interest. So I think it's a really a win-win-win for everybody around the table. Right. Um, and Paul, finally for you, uh, you've been experienced in, in research and development in the pharmaceuticals for many years. The world has changed. And we all hear about how pharmaceutical companies rely more on external research and development. Uh, the funding cycle has been tough and the capital markets are tough. So from a J&J a, a &J point, point of view, and from your own personal experience point of view, how important is this latest development? And what else can our industry do to ensure that, as we all like to see, great medicines get to the market? Well, I think what I learned in my life is to get as efficient as possible with resources and with capital uh, and bringing the most value with the least possible amount of capital. And that is what what the market expects from us, from a large pharma, from, from the venture capital environment. And how can we bring that know-how, experience and management capabilities, management experience together to make this happen in the most, ef most efficient way? And both, I think venture capital will learn from it, we will learn from it. But it's both our, uh, our objective, I think, to get as efficient as possible. And again, as I said earlier, it is on 
what questions need to be answered, where do we find the experience and the learnings to not do uh, a mistake twice, and uh, make sure that all is brought to bear to make sure that we bring as efficient as possible molecules forward. And that in the end will yield the return on investment to have money flowing back into our business. And that's what we need to have, the venture capital environment and large pharma environment. Well, I'd like to thank you um, all three for coming along and, and telling us about this new fund, and congratulations. We look forward to seeing how it performs. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good.